police and protesters killed as far-right Islamists protest in Pakistan. Um, in, uh, oh, sorry. On October 22nd, two policemen and two demonstrators were killed in a recent surge of violence in Pakistan. Members of the banned far-right Islamist political party, uh, tariq e Laibak, Pakistan, or TLP, began a march from Lahore towards the nation's capital, Islamabad, demanding that the governor release their leader, Saad Rizvi. Saad Hussein Rizvi, son of the party's radical founder, Kharam Hussein Rizvi, was arrested earlier this year while demanding that Pakistan expel the French ambassador during due to France's refusal to prevent the publications of blasphemous cartoons of the Prophet Muhammad. To stop the protesters from leaving Lahore, the Pakistani government has deployed police and paramilitary personnel, disabled mobile phone service, blocked trains, and even went so far as to dig wide trenches into the highway. Reportedly, hundreds of protesters have been injured, and the government has released 350 members connected to the TLP um, due to negotiations, essentially. So this is a this is like a conflict between the TLP, which is uh, should I just say the far right Islamists in Pakistan or TLP? I don't know. I'm just, from now, I'm going to say TLP. Just please, people yeah. understand that TLP is a major force in Pakistan. Like it's it's such like it, it, this. It, it's so the government is afraid of the TLP. Like they could they have to. Uh, appeal to their demands because they could take the government down probably if the army lets them right so this is a conflict right now but this is the army is not involved right this is just the police the government with uh, versus the tlp is that correct or is the, is the um, army involved? well they did say that paramilitary personnel were deployed for crowd control um i, right. I don't know what from okay. what branch or whatever so my understanding is that, okay, so there are three forces in Pakistan. One of them is the government, the civilian government, okay? The other one is the TLP, and the third one is the army, okay? And the TLP and the army are powerful. The civilian government is, like, stuck in between and is kind of, like, the most, the weakest one, and it has to survive now by by making sure that if it says something that these two, two powerful groups don't like, it could be replaced, Right. And I think but my understanding is that the army sometimes uses the TLP as a way to intimidate the civilian government, right? So Emran Khan is, you know, and, and I get a lot of people keep saying like, oh my God, why is Emran Khan becoming more and more Islamic? Why is he becoming so obsessed with like Muhammad being the last prophet? And I'm like, I kind of sympathize with him because I kind of feel like if I keep doing like the TLP is getting becoming so, so much powerful, and I would just like what would love to be able to keep my head on my shoulders. So I would like, I don't know if I wouldn't do what Imran Khan is doing. If I was in Pakistan, I probably would be giving into the TLP given how much of an influence they have. But this is getting scary, guys. Like the TLP's influence is like the fact that the army is like just using them as a way to like manipulate the government. They will eventually become so powerful that there's no holding them back. And Pakistan has nukes, guys. If the TLP ever takes over Pakistan, this is like this is like a threat to the whole world. This is like this is. I'm literally so terrified of that. <laughs> this is one of the scariest Islamic groups in the world, and they have the highest number of followers compared to the most. This is, I would I would argue from the right now, among the radical Islamic groups, the TLP is the one with the most followers. Right? I don't know. Maybe it's a top. Yeah, it is. Right? Ever since I think so. And this, like, these are radical people. Like, well, these before people are they like, were, before they were banned, they were one of the most, uh, like, one of the top most popular political parties in Punjab, in particular. I think that's where they have the strongest yeah. base. Guys, these are like ISIS level people with that kind of mindset, or you know, or Al. Kai, you know what the rest of it is kind of mindset right and but they are but the difference is that they are actually a political party and they have so many followers in pakistan and they could take over the government 
and imagine people with that mindset having access to nukes. Okay, these are not people who think that you should be executed because drawing cartoons of Muhammad. They would think that you should be executed simply for saying, you know, for simply for being Shia. You know, what I mean, like these are or for being like, oh, like not denying the finality of the prophet. That would yeah, make like their you, brains explode. That, that would make yeah if you say like oh i love muhammad but maybe he maybe he was not the last prophet that is grounds for execution for you that's that's these people okay not like so and and they are they are willing to pay the price like these are these people are not afraid of dying like these people are very very committed to fighting for islam or the finality of muhammad being a prophet like for that cause they don't care about pocket they could take down pakistan with them as long as they're on the right side of islamic ideology like this is these are oh, radical totally. radical people yeah these are like insanely radical people and now they're becoming even more influential in pakistan this is really scary i so, I'm, i really think the army in pakistan is betraying pakistan by using this as these people as a weapon because this could like take over yeah anyways go on I think what's kind of important to think about and note is um, a lot of people probably remember six months ago, we covered similar um, issues and huge protests by the TLP and violence by the TLP in Pakistan. So this was because six months ago, there were all these protests surrounding demanding that they expel the French ambassador because they think France as a whole represents insulting the prophet. <laughs> <laughs> which is not it's like it's it's such a collective mindset on steroids um because france says hey this is something that is a protected right to do now like all of france is insulting the prophet and so we need to boycott france um saad Rizvi's dad called for france to be actually i don't know if i can say it let's say he's he called for um the nuclear capability of pakistan to be used on france um really really extreme stuff and during these protests it, it had major fallout there were police officers that were held hostage the tlp party got banned as a political group so they can no longer run as a legitimate political organization which is but a good thing, but they don't need it because they can shake the government on the street. Um, mm. The third thing was that um, Saad uh, Rizvi, the current leader, was arrested in Pakistan under um, counter or anti-terrorism acts within the penal code. Um, and then part of the contention about why they're demanding his release now is I can't remember the exact details off the top of my head, but there was some form of ruling that said that he should be released by now or that he was supposed to have had hearings by now, but he hasn't because of the insane security risk surrounding him in his situation. They haven't transferred him to do that. And so there is some issue with the judicial process that doesn't seem like it's going quite right, um, which prompted this whole, um, these mass protests. And I want to say it's still going on, like it's still going. So today when I was preparing for this news, this video was posted roughly 10 hours ago. And I there, just want to, there play. is no call for violence. There's wait, there's no call for violence in there, right? We don't want to No, they're just reporting on the news. Um, okay. I, I would just want to cover a little bit of this so you can guys can see like what's still, it's still happening. On this broadcast is Major Gaurav Arya for this sound. latest breaking news that is coming in. The massive agitation that is now continues in Islamabad as the TLP stages protest against the Imran Khan government demanding the expulsion of French ambassador from the country. It's a video that Pakistan has been trying to black out from the rest of the world. Yes, Major Gaurav Arya, help us understand the situation currently in Islamabad. Okay, uh they have crossed Gujrawala and uh, now uh, there is a red line that the Pakistani administration said they will draw at Wazirabad. So this red line and then they said that, you know, we will take a tough line. The problem is that, uh, you know, it has been handed to Punjab Rangers 
and the Punjab Rangers. Entire Punjab is now under Punjab Rangers, and the Punjab Rangers are officered by the Pakistan Army. And this, you know, uh, you, you can see lakhs and lakhs of people have joined this march, and they are absolutely hell bent on getting to Islamabad. And it is not just throwing out the French ambassador; it is also about severing diplomatic relationship with France. So this is what the Tehreek e Lavaik Pakistan people are saying that the Prophet Muhammad, uh, peace be upon him, has been insulted by France. And one more thing, which I'd like to say, you know. Uh, uh, the Pakistani government, Imran Khan's government and his ministers are saying that these are militants, these are terrorists. No, these are common Pakistanis that you see on the street. They are plumbers, they are carpenters, they are roadside mechanics, they are shopkeepers. You know, these are not armed people. Yes, some of them will carry arms because carrying of weapons and arms in Pakistan is very common. But these are essentially workers of a political party who say that, uh, you know, we would like to fight for the honor of Prophet Muhammad and this is why they want to go to Islamabad. I thought that was really interesting, talking about the full diplomatic severing of ties with France, because mm. that has really major implications, because Pakistan is part of something called GSP+, Plus, which is a program with the European Union, which gives them... Um, like over a billion year, like I, I think annually over a billion in um, uh, trade agreements and aid as well. And part of this package is um, the result is that Pakistani goods are able to be much more competitive in the European par in the European market because of this agreement. And previously, there has there the European Union or um, some pan-European governing body, I can't remember exactly, um, issued, uh, had a hearing and issued statements regarding how the blasphemy situation has gotten so bad in Pakistan that they are considering um, removing and revoking this package from the country if the, if the Imran Khan, the government, um, civil society doesn't get a hold on the blasphemy situation um, much more because it's starting to get so out of control within the past like two and a half years, if not, well, obviously more, but it's really become heightened and escalated over the past two years. Um, and I, I can't remember exactly, but I remember Imran Khan's um, responded at the time, basically doubling down um, once again in protection of the Prophet Muhammad. Um, well, probably behind closed doors, I would imagine they would be trying to stop that kind of thing because that amount of um, aid and income is usually important. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> they need it. But okay, here's an interesting thing. A lot of people in the live chat are complaining that you showed the a far right BJP propaganda channel from India. Okay. So like, <laughs> wait, wait, let me, let me, let me finish. This. And also this one is saying Republic TV is a right wing stooge. Guys, I'm actually very happy that this was shown like um, a right wing Indian channel was shown because he had, he said when he mentioned Muhammad, he said, peace be upon him. Like think about the level of submission that these people are being able to demand that even on a far right BJP channel, you don't dare say Muhammad with the, <laughs> the level of fear that these people have managed to put into the hearts of their enemies, that they, even they are like, I cannot not say peace be upon him after I say Muhammad. Like, I think that's telling, but go on, Susanna, you want to say something? Oh, well, I thought that that was a regarding the source, like I'll be more careful with that in the future. Um, but I think that was pretty good. Just like saying, this is what happened. You know, that wasn't really true. You don't, not really commentary yeah, or opinion. No, he even like defended, he defended the protesters saying like, these are regular Pakistanis. The government is trying to label them as terrorists. These are normal people. I was like, not expecting that. that. I was like, are you caping for the all these? News. The news and the footage was accurate, even though if you didn't like the news. I want to highlight this. Yes, you know, guys, this, is, this, this really is, blew my the mind. Government, 
these Islamists are coming at them and the government, I don't know if this is what's happening, Susanna. I'm assuming what I'm looking at is that the government is digging a trench in the middle of a goddamn road to stop these people marching at their city. Is that what's happening here? Yes, apparently it's also one of the oldest roads in Asia. Oh, wow. Okay. And they're like, they're digging a trench. This is this is getting like the hand that, you know, the, the third battle between Muhammad and his enemies. This is like, it, that was the battle of the trench. This is getting similar to that. This is amazing. They're digging up the roads to stop the people from coming at them. Like the government, the government is, is desperate to stop them and they can't. And this is what they're resorting to. It's amazing. To, well, it's, it's not amazing. just like to stop them on any old march. They're marching to the nation's capital. Yeah. Like, oh, I think they're maybe they're <laughs> expecting like a January 6th type of situation. Like, yeah, worse, apparently. These are again, okay, again. Okay. So, oh, actually, yeah, Ion's like right. Ion is saying they're even putting ship containers to block the protesters. Yeah, so they're taking shipping containers, um, the big metal ones, and using them as barricades. And there's been a number of, I mean, because they've tried to set up these barricades in many different places, but oftentimes they just move them right out of the way and continue. And they're doing this whole like march on foot, mostly. I mean, there are cars for um, medical assistance or um, getting people water and food. And so the secular radius and do they think, do you think they will fill it with water and crocodiles? Like if they make a moat? <laughs> Just make a moat around the capital. Um, Have a little drawbridge. Okay, liberal uh, liberal Bung Hindu is saying, if TLP comes to power in India, how will it affect India? How? That's how that assuming. I, wait, assuming assuming there would be any in India and <laughs> India to affect. <laughs> You're assuming. I'm kidding. No, I'm no. Well, what do you mean? How would it affect India? How, if the if the if an Islamist party, the most radical kind, get takes over Pakistan and has access and to the news, only how would thing I, they care about is blasphemy. The only the, thing, the, like that, is the foundation well, of their party, their flagship I would issue. Say they, I would say they care about taking out India more than they care about blasphemy. Like I'm, I, I would be scared for India, of course. They would let, raise conflict to places. You know what? The one reason why I know this. In the, okay, so here's the thing. I don't think TLP. I don't know if China will allow oh, the TLP wait. to just take over Pakistan. Yeah. They meant to say if the TLP comes to power in Pakistan, not if they come to power in India. That's what I'm saying. Oh. That's what I'm responding to. Go ahead. If they come into power in Pakistan, of course it will be a major conflict. Oh, you you misread it. I read it properly. It will take, it will completely take it will completely raise conflict in the region into levels between two nuclear countries, and one of them doesn't seem to be take care about. You know. Okay, so here's the thing: nuclear weapons are deterrents if both sides are interested in living. Okay. And I don't know if TLP cares much about living. So that's why I'm, this is going to be, a, this needs to be a concern for the entire planet. Okay. Not, this is not, okay. Here's the thing. If the TLP comes into power in Pakistan, the whole planet is at risk and India is right next to it. Right. So if the whole planet is at risk, what do you think the effects is on India, given that they're like right there and they are the, their number one target. Okay. So the whole world should be afraid, and I and I think for that reason, the world is not going to let it happen. Like, United States is not going to let it happen. I think China is not let it going to happen. I think that's the reason why United States constantly gives aid to the Pakistan because they can't have the TLP in power, right? But it's very irresponsible of the Pakistani army and the ISI. They don't want the TLP in power, but the fact that they're using it as a way to intimidate the government in Pakistan. The civilian government is extremely irres irresponsible and it betrays the Pakistani people and the whole world. Like this is not what, you, again, they're, they're, they're evil. Okay. Um, one last thing I want to mention that this whole submission to, you know, this whole idea of like getting rid of France's, you know, amb uh, ambassador and also submitting everybody has to like completely so say dumb. that Muhammad was a, 
No, and it, it's actually very genius because this is not about just getting rid of the ambassador. This is not just about accepting Muhammad as the last prophet. This is a symbolism of, this is a method of showing submission. Do you know what I mean? These are tools. These are not ends by themselves. This is like a constant, it's a, it's a measurement of who is submitting to us and who is it. So it might look like it's just about getting rid of the ambassador or like making sure that everybody understands that Muhammad is the last prophet, but it's more about how submit, how give a, sh display the signs that you're bending the knee to us. That's what it's about. And actually, I think when it comes to dominating ideology, it is a very powerful fear tactic. And um, you know, I, we 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 have talked about the use of language and people m even making you say things that are true have been made uh, been used as a tactic to show that you're sub you're submitting right this is something this is a power problem some some of us had with the way black lives matter was being used by some people not by everybody because even though we agree and we want to say it in some places it was being used as a way to, for you to show that submission now this is that a hundred times worse or a million times worse like this is like anyways but you understand what i'm saying as a you know, yeah. as a submission yeah, yeah. tactic. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that's a really interesting anyway. point, actually. I'm going to think about that some more. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. All right. Uh, thank you, Sus. You make you know, guys. From all the people that compliment me, the one that I care about the most is Susanna's. When Susanna acknowledges that I said something intelligent, it just makes my day. I, I just it's the best. Okay. Anyways, hey, can I? Other people they're just here to witness. <laughs> no, no, no. They, I like their compliments. It's just that Susanna is really smart. So if somebody that smart and intelligent thinks Aww. I'm smart, then I must be doing something right. Hey, guys. If you're a fan of Blasphemy and Sexy Callie, you know, like me, then you need to be sure to subscribe to our newsletter. Link in the description below. Because if you subscribe, we will send you a free copy of our Blasphemous Art ebook. And let me tell you, it is the tastiest blasphemy that you can find anywhere available today. And we are so generous with our blasphemy that we continue to send you more blasphemy every week. So make sure to subscribe. Link in the description below.